Okay. So, to continue on with the teenhood thing, the suicide attempt. That day I cleaned my room, dusted, vacuumed, top to bottom, organized my records, gave things away to my brothers that they'd been wanting, did my laundry, folded it all neatly, put it all away, put on my favorite outfit, did my makeup, did my hair. Um, I took some pills. I did not know that these pills wouldn't, wouldn't kill me. My intention was to die. I wanted to die. They were Vivran and no dose. They would have just made me very sick. I didn't know that. It's 15. I've never been into drugs, so that's the most me and my friends have done. So, um, I lined them up perfectly with Vibran in rows and the nodos. And a little Dixie cup took one. I kneeled down and had them on my bed, arranged, and took one after the other. And then after I did that, I ran a bath, a hot bath, and got in, and I felt so good. I was so content, so relaxed, so at peace, and, and I was just so happy that I was, it was finally going to stop. My alcoholic parents, loneliness, Um, just being, not having any control over your life because you're a kid. You know, your parents make your decisions for me. It was finally all going to be over. It was finally going to be a peace. I was so happy for myself. And then the strangest, bizarrest thing happened. Knock on the bathroom door and my parents said, uh, someone's on the phone for you and I was really irritated that this had happened and it had interrupted because by now the walls were starting to get wavy <laughs> and everything was turning yellow and my heart was pounding and racing and I was just enjoying the process of dying or what I thought was dying I was really interrupted I was really irritated that I'd been interrupted and I said well it's so-and-so, which was the girlfriend that I had, and so, because it was her, I got out of the tub, and I got on the phone with her, and she just said, are you okay? I just know something, something wasn't right when I talked to you last. Something's wrong. What have you done? You've done something. I just know it. And that voice that I just told you about, like cashmere, just smooth, um, wheedled it out of me and I told her and I was actually shocked that I could not that she was not happy for me as she was not as happy for me as I was happy for myself I couldn't understand why she can you know don't you understand I'm finally gonna be at peace you know this is the answer I found the answer why can't you be happy for me I gotta go my bath's getting cold <laughs> and I hung up so it is obvious that I was not in my right mind. Yeah. Um, I was off. I was, I was having both hype, I was having manic and depression. I was euphoric about dying. <laughs> and, um, which I have experienced a few times further in my life. Anyway, uh, she called my parents and longer, Long story short, less long, I ended up in a psychiatric hospital for a month. This is, you know, when insurance was a little different. And uh, I was misdiagnosed with situational depression, which is uh, different than clinical depression because situational depression is that, well, it's just that the things going on around you are causing the depression, not clinical depression. That was a misdiagnosis. Um, but uh, my psychiatrist was psycho. She was messed up. She was totally messed up. Ugh. Um, I hated her. 
and they put me on an antidepressant. Now this is in the 80s, so it was a tricyclic antidepressant, Norperman. Um, it made my mouth dry, cottony, my brain fuzzy, constipated, had to have enema, it was horrible, it was disgusting, and I finally figured out that I was not going to get out of this place until I just followed the program because I was just angry in there. Bitter, I hated it. But then I followed the program just to get out. I got out as miserable as when I went in. Um, but determined not to... Um, I do think the clinical depression had lifted enough that I was able to say, well, I'm not going to do that again. I don't want to end up back there. But I was still angry and um, nasty to people, like parents and stuff. But then the gear shifted. And um, I felt I did I stopped taking the antidepressants, but uh, eventually I did feel better. I did start to feel normal. And then I started to feel good great. My self-esteem shot through the roof. Became a little arrogant. Um, I took my schoolwork, did it in the breeze, got A's, took on classwork that you wouldn't imagine that someone would be able to accomplish in that time. In other words, I was having hypomania, high productivity, high creativity, um, I was flirtatious. I would have girlfriends, still be flirting with other girls. I had a couple girlfriends at the same time and still flirting. I just couldn't resist. Um, very impulsive um, and had tantrums. Worse than I'd ever in my life. Destroyed things, record players, telephones, in just volatile outbursts. I hid them under my bed. I had all this quick stuff under my bed that was broken. Speakers, holes in the wall, you know, and is that just being a teenager? Or was that mood changes? It was a little of both. So, um, so I graduated with a uh, academic diploma, which was supposed to, which was a little higher up than the regular diploma, um, ready for college, and that'll be a new video, my early young adulthood video, and uh, that's when the crazy obsessive stalking behavior starts. So you don't want to miss that. 